Hello there, I am Rebecca Dirks and welcome to my guided tour of gear that I own. First off, let's start with the guitar. Its name is Fozzy. The uh, reason I named it this is because a lot of guys name their guitars after like girls that they've gone out with and stuff and that's just wanky. So I figured Muppets is the way to go. So this is my first one but it shall continue onwards in that vein. Um, it's a black machine. Handmade London. It's a B6. It's the, the baby in the range, uh, kind of the budget model, if there is a budget black machine. Uh, it's a Swamp Ash body. Uh, it's got some cool stuff. You get in right here. I like this bit of wood grain because it looks like fire. But yeah, it's uh, I got it in the December of 2009, and that was like the last time he was using this kind of tailpiece here before he went to the fancy shallow hunts bridge i'm not bitter or anything uh the these are ebony which is fun then it's a maple neck rosewood fretboard jumbo frets uh locking tuners which are awesome i love these they make changing strings so quick um super expensive dampening device up here i tell you where to get one but only the pros know where to get these and uh yeah, pickups are black machines. No, they're not. The guitar is a black machine. The pickups are bare knuckles. Uh, cold sweat here, painkiller there. Really lovely. The um, the camo finish is wearing off now, so it's all gold around the edges and stuff. Um, really nice pickups. I'm thinking about changing them out. I might try and get some Holdsworth pick, uh, pickups in the future. It's just a matter of patience and saving. Yeah, so that's the guitar. Moving on to picks and talking for as long as you can about a pick. I use this Red Bear. What is it? The Little Jazza... Little Jazza Plus, I think it's called. Um, I had the Little Jazzers before and one of them snapped and the other one disintegrated in the washing machine or got lost in the washing machine. Uh, then I moved on to this, which has got a longer tip and stuff, and uh, I wouldn't do it again. I would get the little jazzer if I could do it over, because I preferred the way that felt. This pokes out too much. But they're really nice. They give a really good kind of honest sound when you pluck the string, so, and I like that. I don't like too much like chung chung twang to it. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of, this is a challenge for our director here. As you can see, it's kind of decroded around the edge. If I could, I would get a new one. Uh, if you know any good pick manufacturers that are on the same level as this, but lower on the price range, do let me know. Anyway, moving on. Since we're talking about chump change right now, cables are planet waves. Um, they are the first kind of good cables that I've ever used. Uh, I got them when I was back in the UK, and they've lasted an incredible amount of time, uh, about three years now. And that's just unprecedented for me with cables. Um, once again, if you know a good uh, cable company that isn't that bad, I mean, not kind of Mogami prices or anything, if they can offer a good level of quality and durability, because these are on their way out, please let me know. Moving on to my amplifier. This is not a Line 6 Spider 4 anymore. This is the Marshall Jubilee 2550. So that's the 50 watt version. Um, awesome amp. I tried one out first at Guitar Center. I was just as a joke. I was like, "What's this funny-looking old grey Marshall?" And I plugged it in without touching any of the controls. It was the the sound I've always wanted. So since then, that was like two years ago. I've always wanted one, and last year I was finally able to get one. And uh, it looks like a single channel amp. It's only got this many knobs, which is good because I can't handle that many knobs. But it's got these push-pull things. And so, once that's for like the clean channel, and then the lead channel, and that is this weird control that gives you like a little bit of grit on the clean channel. Uh, the clean channel, uh, speaking of that, is awesome. For a marsh lamp, it's really good. It's just, it's Fender like, everyone who listens to it goes, well, that's like a Fender amp. So, that's a really good thing, reason to have one. The main reason to have one is the lead channel is just incredible. It's so smooth, totally unlike Marshall's before or since, really. 
I think, and many people agree with me that this is one of the best Marshalls and indeed one of the best amps ever made, so I'm really, really pleased to have it. As far as tubes go, that's the only thing I want to change right now. Um, it's kind of got a random trio of preamp tubes. It's like three 12AX7s from different fathers, if you know what I mean. And then it's got some Electro Harmonics EL34s. Um, I've listened to some Electro Harmonics tubes and they sound better than like the um, Chinese things, but, because they're made in Europe apparently. Uh, but what I want to do is uh, put some JJs in there, like 12AX7s uh, of course in the preamp, but then some E34Ls in the uh, power section. And then this will be pretty much set and I'll be uh, perfectly happy with it from then. Hopefully we can get footage of this, but then underneath the Marshall is the speaker cab. This is my latest acquisition. Uh, it's a Mesa three-quarter back. And uh, the reason I got this was that it was a really good price for one thing. It was amazing to come across it at this price, the price that it was rather. And the speakers are good. There's not the V30, it's uh, the Celestian Black Shadow or the C90. Uh, for some reason these two speakers, probably because Mesa either used those or the V30, that's the reason why people compare them so much. I don't see why since they're so different from one another. Uh, these speakers are really kind of smooth, maybe more geared to a single note guitar playing. The V30 has got a lot more bark and kind of to it. But on balance I chose the Black Shadows because I played the Halfback, the 4x12, and I really liked that. So I was like, oh, this has got two of those, I'll have that, it's quality enough. And Team with the Marshall and this, uh, it was a really good combination for that smooth kind of lead sound that I like. As far as recording is concerned, the reason why I use camera audio in my videos is because this piece of crap is the only mic I've got. It's a Yoga FX528, not B8. And it's a vocal microphone. It does all right recording your voice talking into it, but when you put it in front of a cab, it just like, all the bass just gets sucked out of the mix entirely. It's just like, you just, ah, like, all you get is mids. So, yeah, this is my plea. If anyone's got an SM57 and they want to donate to the cause, you know, PM me, alright? <laughs> and out here in the living room, amongst my wife's sewing kind of stuff, and Black Santa here, we've got uh, Mackie MR5 studio monitors. These were a really good deal on mine, and uh, I got them on a recommendation from a guy at a guitar store. Uh, pretty good, but they do have a tendency to make what you've recorded sound good on there, and then you get it off of there and it sounds kind of thinner. If anybody knows how to set one up to make that not happen, do let me know. Uh, then we've got the M-Audio Fast Track for an interface. I wouldn't recommend getting this one. Uh, I believe they've updated it, so it may be better, but it comes with Pro Tools SE, and that really sucks as a program, because um, the recording just stops whenever it wants, and then you have to like stop whatever you were doing, delete it, and then start again really annoying. Um, wouldn't do it again, in other words. Uh, that's basically it for now. Thank you and hello to my new subscribers and thank you and hello to my old subscribers. Uh, indeed, thank you to uh, Laurie Monk for favouriting one of my old my other videos and uh, getting me out there to a few other people to see. Do you remember if you like our stuff and you want us to continue to improve do like, share, comment, favourite, and of course...